Good day, great tens. In this lesson, we're actually going to be revising how to solve quadratic equations. You should have done this in grade 9, but let's just practice and make sure you know how to do it so we can continue. We're asked to solve for s, and we have s squared minus 2s minus 35 is equal to 0. Now, if this is the first time that you've seen this type of what's essentially a quadratic equation, you might be tempted to try to solve for s using traditional algebraic means. But the best way to solve this, especially when it's explicitly equal to 0, is to factor the left-hand side and then think about whether Think about the fact that those binomials that you factor into, that they have to be equal to 0. So let's just do that. So how can we factor this? We've seen it several ways. I'll show you kind of the standard way we've been doing it by grouping. And then there's a little bit of a shortcut when you have a 1 as a coefficient over here. So when you look at something, when you do something by grouping, when you factor by grouping, you think about two numbers whose sum is going to be equal to negative 2. So you think about two numbers whose sum, a plus b, is equal to negative 2, and whose product is going to be equal to negative 35. a times b is equal to negative 35. Since the product is a negative number, 1 has to be positive, 1 has to be negative. And so if you think about it, ones that are about 2 apart, you have 5 and negative 7. I think that'll work. 5 plus negative 7 is equal to negative 2. So to factor by grouping, you split this middle term into a, we can split this into a, let me write this way, we have s squared, and then this middle term right here, I'll do it in pink, this middle term right there, I can write it as plus 5s minus 7s, and then we have the minus 35, and of course all of that is equal to 0. Now we call it factoring by grouping because we group it. So we can group these first two terms. And these first two terms, they have a common factor of s. So let's factor that out. You have s times s plus 5. That's the same thing as s squared plus 5s. Now in, this second, in these second two terms right here, you have a common factor of negative 7. So let's factor that out. So you have negative 7 times s plus 5. And of course, all of that is equal to 0. Now we have two terms here where both of them have s plus 5 as a factor. Both of them have this s plus 5 as a factor. So we can factor that out. So let's do that. So you have s plus 5 times, times this s times this s right here. Right? s plus 5 times s would give you this term. And then you have minus that 7 right there minus that 7. I undistributed the s plus 5. And then this is going to be equal, this is going to be equal to 0. Now that we've factored it, we just have to think a little bit about what happens when you take the product of two numbers. I mean, s plus 5 is a number. s minus 7 is another number. And we're saying that the product of those two numbers is equal to 0. If I were told you that I had two numbers, if I told you that I had the numbers a times b and that they equal to 0, what do we know about either a or b, or both of them. Well, at least one of them has to be equal to 0, or both of them have to be equal to 0. So the fact that this number times that number is equal to 0 tells us that either, either s plus 5 is equal to 0, or, or, and maybe both of them, or s minus 7 is equal to 0. Or, I'll do that in just green, or s minus 7 is equal to 0. And so you have these two equations. Actually, we could say and or. It could be or and <laughs> either way. And both of them could be equal to 0. So let's see. Let's see how we can solve for this. Well, we can just subtract 5 from both sides of this equation right there. And so you get on the left-hand side, you have s is equal to negative 5. That is one solution to the equation. Or you have, let's see, you can add 7 to both sides of that equation and you get s is equal to 7. So if s is equal to negative 5 or s is equal to 7, then we have satisfied this equation. We can ver even verify it. If you make s equal to negative 5, you have positive 25 plus 10, which is 35, minus 35. That does equal 0. If you have 7, 49 minus 14 minus 35 does equal 0. So we've solved for s. Now I mentioned there's an easier way to do it. And when you have, when you have something like this, where you have 1 as the leading coefficient, you just 
you don't have to do this two-step factoring. Let me just show you an example. If I just have x plus x plus a times x plus b, what is that equal to? x times x is x squared. x times b is bx. a times x is plus ax. a times b is ab plus ab. So you get x squared plus, these two can be added, plus a plus bx plus ab. And that's the pattern that we have right here. We have 1 as a leading coefficient here. We have 1 as a leading coefficient here. So once we have our two numbers that add up to negative 2, so once we have our two numbers that add up to negative 2, that's our a plus b, and we have our product that go gets to negative 35, then we can straight just factor it into the product of those two things. So it'll be, or the product of the binomials where, we, where th those will be the a's and the b's. So it'll be, so we figure it out. It's 5 and negative 7. 5 plus negative 7 is negative 2. 5 times negative 7 is negative 35. So we could have just straight factored at this point 2, 2. Well, actually, this was a case of s. So we could have factored it straight to the case of s plus 5 times s minus 7. We could have done that straight away, and we've gotten to that right there. And of course, that whole thing was equal to 0. So that would have been a little bit of a shortcut, but, but factoring by grouping, will uh, it'll, it'll, it's a completely appropriate way to do it as well. Right, great 10. So I hope that you saw how to factorize this. I personally don't really use grouping when I'm factorizing quadratics. I use the second method. So let's look at a little bit of a practice now. We're going to do something a little bit, well, we're going to carry on with the um, quadratics and the trinomials and factorize them. But I need you to be remember, I need you to be reminded of something else. And that is that we're factorizing. So. That's what we're basically doing when we are solving quadratics. We are factorizing. So the very first thing that you need to do when you are doing this is you need to first look for common factors because that's what we do when we factorize. So if we look at the next sum, which we've got here is 2x squared minus 2x minus 12 equals 0, you can see that we have a common factor. We can take out a common factor of 2. So if I do that, it's 2 and becomes x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0. And then we can divide both sides by 2 to get rid of it. So we divide both sides by 2. So when we divide both sides by 2, this cancels that. And obviously 0 divided by 2 is just 0. So we're left with x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0. And then it just becomes a basic quadratic again. So we got two brackets, a coefficient of the first term is 1. Remember that's an implied 1. So basically we're going to have x and x because x times x gives you x squared. Now we look at this sign. Now I don't know if you remember but when we were factorizing earlier we in previous lessons we learned that if the sign is different then that means that the one, I mean if, if the sign is a minus that means the one sign is a minus and the other sign is a plus. And then what we need to do is we now need to work out our factors. So if we look at 6, our factors of 6 are 1 and 6, 1 times 6 is 6, and 3 and 2. And as you've been taught, what we now want is two numbers that when added together give you or subtracted give you this number here, which is an implied 1, and when multiplied give you a 6. So if you look at this, you go 1 times 6 is 6, great. But 6 minus 1 is 5, so that does not give us, or 1 plus 6 is 7, that does not give us a 1 year. However, 3 times 2 is 6, yay, but 3 minus 2 gives us 1. So the difference between these two is 1, which is what the implied thing is here. But the, what you need to remember is that this is a minus 1. So what we really want, and you notice this, is we want a minus 3 plus 2. Minus 3 plus 2, when we add them, becomes minus 1. And we multiply them, minus 3 times by 2, we end up with minus 6. So those there are the factors that we want. So we're going to put the 3 over here and the 2 over here. So what does this mean? This means that x minus 3 equals 0 or 
x plus 2 equals 0. So what does that mean? That means that x equals 3 or x equals minus 2. Okay, so not too difficult. Just remember always look for your common factors. You could have factorized this without having to take out a common factor, but it just makes it a little bit more complicated, especially when you've got bigger numbers. Let's look at another example. Right, now this is a common question on grade 12 exam papers. Why? Because kids are silly. They're doing it in the first couple of questions in the exam paper and they make silly little silly mistakes and they go oh I know how to do this x minus 3 equals 6 or x plus 2 equals 6 and the answer to that is no we have to break this up and get it into the form of the proper quadratic before we can solve it you can't just do that so what we have to do is we have to multiply this out first so first term of the first term so we're going to multiply this with this that becomes x squared then we first term with the last becomes plus 2x. Second term of the first is minus 3x and then minus 3 to plus 2 is minus 6 equals 6. Now we want to solve this so what we need to do is have this side be a 0. So we're going to take everything onto this side and we're also going to make it look pretty. But what I mean by making it look pretty is we're going to add the like terms. So we've got plus 2x minus 3x is minus x again and then we've got minus 6 and when we take this across it becomes minus 6 equals 0. So again we've got x squared minus x minus 12 equals 0. Okay so now we can factorize this. So that's we're factorizing into our two brackets. The number in front of the x squared is actually just 1 so this becomes x and x. Again, because this is a minus, we've got a minus and a plus. And now we need to look for factors again that are going to give us a difference of 1, but when they multiply, give us 12. So our factors of 12 are obviously 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. And do you agree that 1 and 12, when we subtract them, does not give us 1? It gives us 11. And when we add them, it gives us 13. So that doesn't work. 6 minus 2 is 4, and 6 plus 2 is 8. Nope. But 4 minus 3 is 1. Now again we look at this and we see that we actually want minus 1, which means we're going to have minus 4 plus 3. And that gives us minus 1. That means that the negative number here is going to be the 4 over here. And this is going to be 3. And now we need to solve for it, so it's very easy. We've got x minus 4 equals 0 or x plus 3 equals 0. Therefore, x equals 4 or x equals minus 3. Okay, let's do another example. Okay, I do not want you to panic because there's suddenly an x at the bottom and there's suddenly a fraction. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to realize we want to get rid of our x. We want to get rid of our x. So in order to get rid of the x at the bottom, we're going to multiply everything by x. So we're going to do 6x times by x is equal to 7 times by x plus 3 over x times by x. So what does that leave us? The reason we're doing this is because if you look at this you know that this is x over 1. So x times x is those just cancel beautifully but now we have a different thing because now we've got 6 times x times x is 6x squared. This becomes is equal to 7x plus 3 okay and then we take everything to the front so it becomes 6x squared minus 7x minus 3 oh let me just fix that in color oh I don't want it in color I want an eraser Let's try again, eraser, let's make that nice. And then basically we're going to go back to our input. Okay, there we go. Minus 3 equals naught. Now, you guys haven't ever done a question with a number in the front of your x squared. So we're going to show this to you as well. A little bit more complicated, but we can do it. It's very easy. It just needs to be thought about nice and slowly. So Again, we know that we're going to have an x and an x here, but you'll notice I'm leaving a space because I now know that I'm going to have numbers in front of my x's. 
we also know that because this is a minus that one of these is a minus and the other one is a plus now we need to think about this a little bit carefully we need to look at factorizing this but with the six in the front so we need to look at what factors six can be broken into so we can say okay fine six and one three and two and that's it okay so that are those are the coefficients the possible coefficients of our x's the factors of three are really just three and one and one and three and the reason I'm doing that is because we don't know if this bracket is going to be the three and this is the one or this is the one and this is the three now what we need to do is remember that what he showed us is that these when multiplied need to give us we're going to multiply these and add them and subtract them to give us our negative seven okay so let me show you what I mean by that so if we take this and we're going to cross multiply six times one is six and one times three is three if we add that six plus three we get nine which does not equal seven and if we subtract that six times six minus three we do not get a seven either so that's not going to work okay let's try the next one six times three remember we always cross multiplying so six times three is going to be 18 and 1 times 1 is 1 and again that's out of the loop because 18 minus 1 is 17 and 18 plus 1 is 19 so 6 and 1 definitely are not possibilities let's look at this one 3 times 1 is 3 and 3 times 2 is 6 if we add them we get 9 and if we subtract them we get 3 doesn't work Let's try this one. 3 times 3 is 9. 2 times 1 is 1. Ah, let's try that. So 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9. And 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. And 9 minus 2 gives me my 7. So what does that mean? That means that what actually is going to happen is we are going to use the coefficients in the front of 3 and 2 and the coefficients at the back are going to well the numbers at the back are going to be 1 and 3 and the way you write them is you just do this you say okay fine that's how we're going to write it because in order to cross multiply this has to be in one bracket and this has to be in the other bracket now all we have to do is decide which of these is the one that belongs to the minus do you see that we need minus 7 that means the bigger of these two numbers over here has to be a minus. So 3 times 3 should be a minus 9. So we're going to make this be the minus because 3 times minus 3 gives you minus 9. So that would mean that we'd write 3x plus 1 here, which is this bracket here. And then we'd write 2x minus 3 which is this bracket here. So then if we carry on we now know therefore that 2x minus 3 equals 0 or 3x plus 1 equals 0. Therefore 2x is equal to 3 and then if we divide both sides by 2 we get x is equal to 3 over 2 or you've got 3x is equal to minus 1 because when we take it across it becomes a minus we need to divide both sides by 3 to get the x by itself so x is equal to minus a third so that was a bit of an extension question um, not, the ma not the fact that this is a denominator of x that you've done before and can do but the fact that there was a coefficient on the x squared you need to realize that this is actually a little bit of an extension <coughs> try it, practice it, um, and, but you'll see more of this later on. Thank you grade 10s, have a wonderful day. Please practice these and do the assessment at the end of the section.